So, uh, in review, uh, we have G0 coincidence. We have G1, which is, means they touch and they go the same direction, or they're tangent. G2, they touch, they go the same direction, and their radii are equal at the contact point, called curvature acceleration, or curvature, sorry, continuity. Uh, G3, the radii are equal, they're accelerating at the same rate. And in G4, the acceleration takes place in 3D. So, in this presentation, I've been using 2D curves to demonstrate different types of continuity for the most part, except for G4. And, um, but you'll be able to use the exact same principles and terminology when working with uh, continuity between surfaces. Um, but really, who cares? I mean, that's the question that everybody always wonders. Why the heck does it matter what kind of continuity there is between two curves or two surfaces or whatever, as long as it looks good, right? Uh, there, there are a few reasons why you might care. Number one, um, what looks good on screen is very low resolution. So you might be looking at a few hundred or a few thousand pixels, but on the side of a car body, continuity is much more visible, especially with a reflective surface like on a car body. So what's on screen doesn't give an accurate picture of what the real curvature of a line is. Uh, using an appropriate level of curvature, uh, continuity, will help you to ensure that your surfaces uh, are actually as smooth as you expect them to be. Uh, secondly, glossy and or reflective surfaces shine differently on tangency continuous blends than on curvature ones. Uh, the difference is subtle, but it can be important on surfaces with uh, high aesthetic importance. So when your industrial designer comes and taps you on the shoulder and says that your blends look like crap, um, it might be because they are tangency continuous when they should be curvature continuous or even that they're merely G2 continuous when uh, this particular designer thinks they ought to be G3 continuous. In some cases, those kinds of differences can make a difference. Um, finally, there's this concept in CAD called geometric degradation and it can cause problems when you build a model. I'll be demonstrating this uh, phenomenon in a future class. But for now, suffice it to say that um, understanding continuity types will help you achieve the desired results when working in 3D space. Um, so there are a few important notes before we end this class. Firstly, continuity types can only be applied to appropriate curves. So curvature continuity is really pretty much useless when one of the curves being compared is a line. So if, if one curve, if your curve A, is linear and has no curvature, then the fact that it is curvature continuous with curve B makes no difference at all, practically speaking. It may look different, um, but you could achieve the same result simply by making curve or the, the line shorter. So there's really no reason to use curvature continuity in that case, and you, so you wouldn't want to because it's just going to make your model needlessly heavy. Um, or likewise, uh, Curvature plus acceleration is irrelevant if the curve is an arc. So if the radius isn't accelerating, then there's no reason to use G3 continuity. Um, also, Class A surfacing CAD packages uh, allow the user usually to adjust the magnitude or tension of a blend curve. Uh, that allows you to control how much influence the parent curve has over the blend. Um, this functionality can sometimes make a curve uh, look like it is curvature continuous when actually it's just tangent continuous. Uh, this trick is okay if, uh, if the look is all you care about and if you think that the look is good enough uh, with a tangent continuous blend that has been attenuated to look like curvature. Um, however, it won't help with geometric degradation and so if you're having problems with that, which I'll explain in a future tutorial, then you know, uh, tension won't help you. So that's all for this Class A. Thanks for watching. Have fun surfacing.